All right, I want to record a couple more things and talk a little bit, only because the insurance law mandated. Um, we've already touched on a lot of this. Uh, like, what is title insurance? Title insurance is a contract. That's why this is last. Normally, if this was a standalone class, I would have done this first. But you've already had your hours of title insurance. Uh, it's a contract between you uh, and the lender and the title insurance company, wherein the title, the title insurer, in exchange for a premium payment, it's a one-time payment, provides protection as of the effective date, which is typically the closing date, against future losses that might result from a variety of possible defects or encumbrances. Okay, it's against the future losses, but it's because of previous activities. I don't want you to confuse that. Health insurance protects you against future sickness. All right. Title insurance protects you against things that have already happened, but they're going to protect you in the future. That's what that's saying. Okay. Um, there are several different policies. The lender's policy, sometimes it's called a loan policy, protects the lender's investment, which is the buyer's lender. In the event that a defect voids or negatively impacts your title on the property, a loan policy typically is limited to the amount of the loan and the amount of the policy protection decreases as the loan balance decreases and terminates when the loan is paid off. All right. So my premium that I pay is for my mortgage, not necessarily the purchase price. Do you understand what this insurance really is doing? What it's doing is it's protecting me against the defect, which we're, not, we're going to talk a little bit about that, but just bear with me. That, uh, I guess I have to talk about a defect. Like, let's say someone loaned money on the house and now they want their money back and there was no title insurance, they would take the house in a foreclosure to get their money back. Well, how would that affect the new lender that loaned me money to buy the house? So that insurance would basically pay that off. Um, I, I'm getting a lot of deer in the headlight look. Think of it as a car, all right? If I wrecked my car and I borrowed money, I can't use my car. That wreck would be a defect, all right? I can't use the car, but I still owe the bank on it. How do I, why would I keep paying my car payments on a car that I totaled? I wouldn't. I would have car insurance that would pay off my lender so that he would get his money back. And I pay that car insurance a little bit at a time. That would be one of the differences. Title insurance is an insurance that pays if there's a defect, a wreck, let's say, on that has happened in the past, like someone else loaned money on it and they weren't paid off, now my lender is out the money, the title insurance would pay off that loan. So you only really need title insurance for the amount of the loan. Technically, you don't need title insurance if you buy something cash. It would be nice in case there's a problem, so I could get my money back if I pay cash. I certainly don't want to pay $280,000 for a house cash and not have insurance in case something from the past comes back to bite me in the butt, okay? There's an owner's policy as well. It protects the owner of the property against various types of failures or claims that were listed in the policy usually is purchased to cover the full value of the property and remains in force in the indefinite basis. So the owner's policy is one side, the lender's policy is the other. The lender's policy covers the lender and his mortgage. The owner covers all of the stuff that happened during that owner's uh, time frame. All right. A title search is a prior to agreeing to insure a parcel of land, the insurer will conduct a thorough search and examination of the public records concerning the property. They're going to go back and look at 
all the previous deeds, any court records for both the buyer and the seller. If the buyer has something on his uh, public record that's detrimental, they may not is issue the insurance, all right? Uh, tax assessments to make the taxes, any kind of special assessment for taxes, any kind of public documents that may affect that property, like if the school put a lien uh, that added for a special assessment because they needed something, all of those are searched under the public records. Now, here's where we're talking about a defect. In the event of a historical property that in some way impairs your use, enjoyment, or rights to the property, an example might be an undisclosed heir who would have joined in on the previous conveyance or an undisclosed easement that prevents the owner from utilizing all of the portion of the property. Two good examples. Let's go over them. The heir. Suppose someone sold you a property, but all of a sudden somebody pops up and go, hey, wait, I was also on that will. That property was half mine and I didn't want to sell it. Now he's going to file a lawsuit saying, that he had a legal ownership in that property before the seller sold it to you, that would be an undisclosed error. That could be a defect if, they, if the title company did not search the public records and find that the house had a will on it. Or suppose the seller forgot, finger quotes for you online people, that there was a floodplain that you can't build in or a utility easement and they didn't tell you that and you needed that piece of parcel to build your driveway, now you can't use the property in the manner in which you thought you bought it, that would be a defect, all right? If the title company, say, didn't find that easement and they let you buy the property, they could be paying on their policy as well. Um, just a few cases of fraud. There's been some fraud out there, and, and typically, it happens by owners or high-ranking officials. There's been all kinds of things. Uh, there was a title company. There was a title company here in Shelbyville. And I think it was called King Title. And please don't quote me if I'm wrong and don't yell at me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was called King. And Shelbyville, where the owners uh, went on a permanent vacation with all the escrow money, from the banks and the title and from the realtors and all that, okay? Uh, that would be an example. Uh, title agents indicated uh, or indicted, rather, for embezzling clients' funds. I've seen that happen. Uh, and they could be multi-million dollar judgments. So there's all kinds of examples. And if you just go out and Google examples of title insurance fraud, you can find your... Uh, a bunch of title insurance fraud. All right, I want to thank specifically Nick Welch from Welch Abstract and Title. He provided all the information in a nice, concise manner. My name is Raymond Modulin. I am the director of Reilly University and one of the instructors. Nick is also an instructor. You had him earlier, uh, maybe if you were in one of the live classes. Don't forget, you can find Reilly University on Facebook. You can also find Welch Abstract and Title Company. Um, if you've got questions online, email them to me at raymond at realuniversity.com. If you, uh, anybody else has questions, don't forget, uh, we're going to break here. We have got uh, a couple more hours to do. Thanks, and uh, talk to you in a few minutes. Uh, talk to you in a few minutes.